Hello and welcome to this live demo and discussion of the Where is Home project and the Where is Home website. I'm Vimal Patel, um, the lead researcher on the project. My background is in South Asian migration history and this is... Hello, my name is Alnor Mitha and I'm a senior research fellow at Manchester Metropolitan University. I'm also the curator of this uh, compelling exhibition, Where is Home? It is a film that I've curated as well as an exhibition uh, with works being donated by community artists and uh, various other people. So the Where is Home project really responds to um, various kind of uh, political situations, not least the 75th anniversary of uh, the independence of India and the partition of uh, and, 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 and the creation of Pakistan. And also, uh, uniquely, it's the 50th anniversary of the expulsion of Ugandan Asians by the dictator, President Idi Amin Dada. So the exhibition is uh, at various sites at the moment. The next iteration is going to be at the Whitworth Art Gallery, so do come and see it. Yeah, so I don't know, perhaps we can begin with discussion of how the project was conceived. So we had this original idea of we have these two major um, political events that deeply impacted uh, South Asians in the form of the Ugandan expulsion and the partition of British, British India to create India and Pakistan. And, you know, so we have on the one hand the history of empire, the history of decolonization, and how those two events impacted the history of British South Asians, and how, in a way, we are still contending with that legacy. So, in a way, we, 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 speak back, we began the project with the discussion of how do we go about commemorating those two events, but also addressing the kind of the, the, the long history that gives meaning to these events as well. Absolutely, and what I wanted to do through my own kind of uh, artistic background, I wanted to respond to this theme by really connecting with artists, contemporary artists, whose work uh, has a kind of political dimension, but also um, making the film that's very much accessible, right? So it's not just kind of getting uh, footage, historical footage. Of course, there is some footage, and, and, and it, it threads really well in terms of how the film has been kind of um, presented. So we have Jai Chohan speaking about her own kind of, um, you know, her, her own work, but also what, what it's been like living in, in England uh, with, with her daughter, Jasmeer Creed. And we also have uh, Saima Rashid, who's uh, born and brought up in Pakistan, living in Greater Manchester. John Lyons, who's an amazing poet, who's written a special poem for the project, and myself and my daughter having a conversation about uh, where is home. Uh, the conversation I had with my daughter was quite interesting because obviously she's born and brought up in England, and I was born in Uganda. So for myself, coming to England, and that whole journey was really quite, um, it was quite challenging in many ways because um, you know, coming, coming, nobody, I mean, when you're young, you don't really know what's happening in terms of uh, what Idi Amin had, had, had done, actually, you know, to kind of get rid of uh, around 80,000 uh, South Asian people, you know, giving them, um, I think, was it 90 days or thereabouts? So people had to pack their bags and literally leave everything behind. But obviously, as a young child, for me, it was more, um, it's more about an adventure, right? But coming, coming to England uh, and, and kind of finding a new home was, um, was interesting because I had no friends. I didn't really know anybody other than my family. And my family were divided as well. So part of my family went to Italy and the other part were with me. Uh, and we actually arrived uh, in Somerset in a camp. And then we got adjusted and then, and then uh, you know, got, got a, a place in, in Manchester. Yeah. So in a way, what your approach has been is to kind of almost capture like the way in which um, the Ugandan expulsion as well as partition as, and in many ways in the case of John Lyons how empire has impacted 
people living in Britain from a, almost like from a personal perspective? Yes, absolutely. I mean, John, um, you know, c came from Trinidad and, and I think when he arrived in the UK, he, he actually had the, um, the very old colonial passport, and, um, which is quite interesting. Um, and he was having all kinds of uh, racial problems until he, you know, he had to get a new British passport. Um, his his, his um, kind of memories about, about home or Trinidad is really interesting because, because he, his work is very much about the, um, the folklore and the mythology of, of the Caribbean. So his paintings are very much about the carnival, about the festival. So um, he's bringing kind of um, uh, remnants of what's kind of still very much in his mindset. And I think that's the really important thing about this film is that everybody is kind of coming up with these incredible kind of, um, you know, sites of memory that become alive through the conversation, which I think is, is a human thing. Yeah, so in one way we've got this, this film with a focus on how almost migration and empire impacted them personally from, a, from an artistic perspective. So that's, in a way, one particular response to this question of where is home. But there was also a, uh, there is an ongoing uh, physical exhibition that runs alongside the, the presentation of this film as well. Absolutely, and I think it was really important to have the physical exhibition because it gives uh, a real sense of what people were were kind of collecting or or have in their houses. You know, like like these lovely saris and prayer beads and and, and prayer mats and and other artifacts that uh, kind of really you know give you a picture of of how. Everybody, you know, collects things, although they don't actually necessarily think they're collecting things, but they're just in, in the house. Yeah. So to take them outside uh, the house and put them in a museum and gallery context, it becomes, it becomes something completely different. Uh, and it, uh, it also complements the, the film program, yeah. which, which is on at the moment at various different sites. Yeah, so and how, how do you think that, in a way, addresses this question of where is home? Because in a way, those, those items have they take on different meaning in different places. So in the case of Uganda, in the case of Britain, you know, those, those items almost um, have, have, a, have a journey and they possess meaning in different contexts. Absolutely, and I think for people in Britain, maybe they're seen as exotic kind of, you know, uh, things to, to be displayed. Although to be fair, these are kind of like saris and kurtas and other kind of um, stuff that's you know that's on display are part and partial of everyday uh, of people's everyday wear. So, for example, the beautiful kind of uh, piece that we have displayed at uh, Wolverhampton Art Gallery, it's a garara, which is often worn uh, during weddings. So it kind of uh, not only kind of you know responds to what people have uh, in terms of um, a tome, but also in terms of in terms of ceremonial kind of ideas of, of what people wear and how that's displayed as well. Yeah. So we have this almost a very deeply personal take on this question in the context of these major political developments, um, but we also have. Um, an exploration of the history itself from a kind of uh, bird's eye view almost, looking at the development of um, British Empire, the, the experiences of South Asian, South Asian migrants in both um, Africa um, and India and what would become Pakistan. So that's what I'm going to turn to now. So I'm going to explore um, the, the website and the, the historical timeline that complements the, 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 the very personal take um, that the, the physical exhibition and the film uh, went about addressing those questions. So now turning to the website. So, so the website includes a timeline of historical developments beginning in 1600 to round about the present day. So as well as the historical timeline, we also have interviews that were conducted at workshops that were held across the country. So we can just click on interviews on the top menu 
and that pulls up the interviews that were conducted with people from uh, or who people who have a connection to Uganda or who were impacted by partition. Now going back to the home page, the historical timeline can be explored by three themes. So we have Empire on the March that documents the rise of the British Empire, Empire in Retreat, which documents uh, the decline of Britain's empire as well as decolonization, and then post-war Britain, which covers uh, the cultural impact of South Asians on post-war Britain. So in all, the timeline has 359 separate um, points or articles, and those articles range from um, short summaries of historical events, uh, quotes from um, primary sources. So, for example, we have um, extracts from the Ugandan Argus from 1972, um, extracts from uh, Gandhi's uh, Harijan Journal, as well as um, as well as um, political speeches of important historical figures. So, let's click on one of the themes. So, we have Empire on the March. So Empire on the March brings up a very detailed timeline of the development of Britain's empire, beginning with uh, the East India Company receiving a royal charter, um, all the way to, if we scroll all the way down, um, it's a very long timeline, but it goes all the way till um, the height of Britain's empire. Um, then if we click on Empire and Retreat, we have a similar timeline and so forth. So now let's look at some of the articles. So I've, I've pulled up one particular article. So this was um, the transfer of power from Britain to India and Pakistan. And in this particular article, we have a, a recording of Nehru's speech to the nation at the midnight hour. And then on another particular article, we have a extract from uh, a Times article which interviewed the chairman of the Uganda Resettlement Board from 1972. So in a way, the, the timeline can almost be used as a historical source book with the number of primary sources that are being referenced on the timeline. Um, and also, the website has a search and tag function. So if you want to um, explore the timeline and explore the themes, but you want to focus on a particular keyword, so it might be, I want to look at articles relating to Gandhi. Um, Gandhi can be, uh, can be searched in the search function, um, but you also may wish to explore the timeline in terms of tags. So. Equally, this, the search function can be used to search tags. So each article has a number of tags relating to it. So for example, we can click on EIC, and that will pull up all the articles relating to the East India Company. So that's a number of ways in which the timeline can be explored. So that concludes the exploration of the website and our brief discussion of the Where is Home project. I hope you um, make use of the website and really kind of um, take something away from the interviews as well as the, the, the physical exhibition um, and the film that um, Al Noor has curated. Absolutely. Please do come to the next iteration of Where is Home, which will be presented on the 12th of August at the Whitworth Art Gallery in Manchester.